So even though this is a sad day, I'm very proud of the work of the Moline Police Department and the tireless pursuit of the truth for families seeking answers about their loved ones. I would like to commend Moline Police Department Detective Mike Griffin, who is extremely passionate about policing, investigations, and serving the community. Over the years, you've heard his name before, solving extremely difficult cases, and sometimes cases that have spanned decades. This isn't his first success story, and it certainly won't be his last. He's dedic his dedication, passion, and expertise is extraordinary. He spent countless hours examining water routes, unidentified bodies, case files, and reports in this case. He did not give up, even when that initial report appeared this body that we ultimately identified wasn't Mr. Asplund. He works hard for the community he serves, and we are lucky to have him on our team in Moline. The Moline Police Department was assisted in this investigation by Dr. Lindsey Trammell from the St. Louis County Medical Examiner's Office, forensic scientist Aaron Small from the Illinois State Police Forensic Services Laboratory in Springfield, and Amy Jenkinson, Regional Program Specialist for NamUs. We are grateful for the resources and expertise dedicated by these agencies and the personal commitment from each team member for their pursuit of answers in this case. Without experts in the scientific community, this closure would not have been possible. Well, this concludes the investigation into the disappearance of Stephen Asplund. The work of the Moline Police Department continues in serving the community. We will search for answers in cases, cases such as Trudy Appleby, who went missing in 1996, Jerry Wolking, who went missing in 1990, Baby September, an infant side from 1993, and Corey Harold Jr., who was murdered in 2018. The Moline Police Department will continue to investigate these cases regardless of time passing, and we hope with continued public cooperation, advancements in scientific technology, and passionate police officers like Detective Griffin and the rest of our staff here at the Moline Police Department, one day we will have answers for these cases as well. Thank you for your time. I'll certainly take it and questions that I can, and uh, Detective Griffin is, is here also if you have specific questions. Again, we're not seeking criminal charges in this case. Um, it, there is no foul place suspected, so today concludes our investigation. Is there any indication at this time how he wound up in the St. Louis area? Do you, you want to handle that? Or, I mean, I can. Go ahead. Uh, we believe that from our investigation that he would have entered the water in Bettendorf likely on the night of January 9th, 1994, and do the hydrology and, and science that we probably don't need to get into, but uh, that he started to make his way down the river and we're assuming that because of where he was following, he's probably got tied up on or towed by a barge down or unbeknownst to the barge traffic in the river until he became dislodged from the barge at the barge docking. Area. So not to be graphic, but after he got into the river here, uh, he got tangled up in some sort of vessel that brought him that far south. Yes, that is what we believe. Okay, all right, thank you. Any other questions? Just to confirm, his body was located and obviously unidentified March 21st, 1994. That's correct. So this picture on the left, and we, we provided this to you in the media packet, is uh, the area in St. Louis County, uh, right, right near I-35 and Coke Road in St. Louis County. I don't know you know how far it is south of St. Louis Metro, maybe? Uh, it's about 10 miles south of the arch. Um, uh, was where the body was located. So you can see on the picture on the right side, we'll also provide that to you, the, uh, the distance obviously from Quad City from where St. Louis is. Uh, so if you go to the next, next slide. It, it, to recap the timeline here, January 9th, 94 was when he went missing. March 21st, as you mentioned, 94 uh, was when it was discovered. Um, and then again, September 6th, when we were able to positively identify that. And again, I'll, we will send these documents out to you. The thought is, is that he entered the water under his own power. Yeah, we don't believe there's any foul play suspected. Right. Okay. Um, Thank you. Was there, uh, and I know you discussed a little bit about the samples that were drawn to make confirmation. What was the, what was the, what was the final linchpin? What, what made you feel comfortable with your, with your identification? We. We worked extensively with uh, Dr. Trammell at the St. Louis County Medical Examiner's Office. Like Chief Galt said, there are some NamUs entries that were incorrect on the Missouri Highway Patrol's end of it. Um, so we had to work with her through it. Um, but there's one discrepancy regarding the dental, um, the dental part of the investigation. And we presented it to uh, our 
command staff and Chief Gall, and we took a leap of faith working with the Illinois State Police that had it not been Mr. Asplin, we were gonna work and, re and find out who it was. So somewhere, someone was gonna get resolution. One way or the other, you're gonna find out who that yeah. was. So we took a leap of faith, depend or based upon the what we knew at that time, and it is what we thought it was gonna be. So up to that point, he was a John Doe down there? That's correct. Okay. What's this like for you after so many years? Um, I don't, I don't know how to answer it. But I think it meant a lot to me last week that to be able to go to the Aspen house and they gave a, a, a big hug and they're thankful on behalf of the, all the work that the police mark has done for the last, you know, 29, almost, or almost 29 years, sorry. Um, so that, that's what meant a lot to me. What was the cause of death? Sorry. The cause of death uh, by the St. Louis County uh, medical examiner in 1994 is determined to be drowning. And what? Never mind. Thank you. Um, do you okay. understand? Didn't his driver's license end up in Andalusia or something? Do you understand um, how that got there? Whether it you know washed up or something? Or it's very likely. Um, it's our belief that it washed up uh, with the floods and the flooding of that particular year. Um, it could have washed up someone un unknown, or someone not knowing that the Steve Aspel investigation was going on could have picked it up and they set it on the handrail. Um, it obviously didn't wash up and then become resting on the handrail. Um, so somebody else likely found it while walking through Loud Thunder Park and then placed it on the handrail. But it likely would have became dislodged from his wallet or his person while on the waterway. You remember what year that was found? That was found in uh, July of 1994. July or August, sorry. Yeah, I'd just like to reiterate that, um, you know, I think that this case continues and should continue to give hope to other cases uh, that are out there, both in, in Moline. Uh, we've worked really hard to close several cases uh, that have been lingering since the 90s and uh, over the last few years. But I think that, um, you know, if I had a message for anyone else in the community that's suffering is either a crime victim or um, missing a family member that, uh, has been gone for weeks, months, or years, um, that the Moline Police Department and many of the passionate police officers around the country continue to work these cases. Um, you know, back in 1994, there wasn't DNA technology like there is today. I don't know what DNA or, or other technology be in another 30 years. So we continue to, you know, rely on our partners in the scientific community to help us better at our jobs and, and have more opportunities to solve cases through forensic science. Certainly a fascinating um, aspect of investigations and trying to partner. We've had success, as you guys have known, been very good at covering some of the successes we've had. Uh, we've, we've engaged private DNA companies. In this case, we use the Illinois State Police Forensic Science Lab. Um, so th those, those resources continue to expand as more funding becomes available, uh, as more technology becomes available. So um, those family members that are home that are still awaiting some sort of resolution to their case, um, you know, I hope that they know that, that law enforcement around the country is, is continuing to try. Uh, you know, we have Detective Griffin, we have, you know, 84 police officers in this agency, this agency serving this great community and do an unbelievable job every day, working really hard. And I know that we're not the only community out there um, that has that same situation. Someone is working your case, someone is, um, cares about a resolution and we continue to work those until the end. And sometimes in this case, you know, we, we found a forensic anthropologist in St. Louis uh, who was a key, key team member here, uh, a forensic scientist in the Illinois State Police Lab in Springfield is a key team member. Um, there's a lot of resources in America and around the country and around the globe, and we continue to pursue those um, to try to bring justice or resolutions or answers to families. All right, anything else? Uh, there'll be a media packet that'll have all of these slides that you saw on the screen, as well as the individual JPEGs or the maps. Uh, maybe a couple additional ones I didn't figure you'd know where Leech Park was, so well, that will go out in the media packet. Um, this press release that I read today, and then a statement uh, from Mike Asplund will also be in your media packet, uh, and those are available. 
Uh, I did receive the, the uh, statement from Mike Aspen on email. Uh, so that was emailed to me. I converted it over to a document on my letterhead for your use. Uh, but I can assure you that that is what was issued by Mike Aspen. They just weren't quite ready to, uh, to handle the media. And, and you know, they're still, even though it's been 28, 29 years, they're still um, dealing with loss and grief today, just like any other family member uh, going through these tough times. So. Um, so they're, they're certainly glad for the resolution, but it certainly is still reliving the loss of the family members. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, so let's conclude the press conference.